Hey everybody, welcome back to the writer's room. Uh, this is Aaron, I'm Todd. Uh, so once again, what we're gonna do on uh, the writer's room each week is we'll take a couple of songs and we'll just kind of get into the mind of the writer of that song. Um, hey, and you never know, you gotta stay tuned. Maybe uh, one day we'll, one of these songs will be an original song and, and, and we'll be the writers. But, uh, but for now, um, we, we picked two songs this week that, that um, were written by uh, a couple of uh, great, great churches. Um, sea of Victory, uh, my Elevation Church, uh, Stephen Furtick and uh, Chris Brown were the writers of that, along with, um, I'll tell you real quick. Um, Let Everything. Yeah, that's the other song. Oh, but um, Yeah, Ben Fielding, that's kind of cool. Ben Fielding from Hillsong actually got together with Chris Brown of Elevation Church, uh, along with Jason Ingram. So those guys wrote that great song, and then um, and then Aaron's going to talk about... Uh, the <laughs> song I'm doing, it's called Let Everything, uh, and subtitled Praise the Lord, and it's written by Pat Barrett, um, which I had never heard until about two weeks ago. Uh, it's also often performed by Sean Fuch, who's doing that... Um, revival around the nation right now yeah and i was gonna tell you the other day i think pat barrett is someone that um is kind of a protege of chris tomlin i think oh. i don't know if you knew that but i i picked up on that somewhere chris tomlin kind of took him under his wings and I just want to say real quick i do appreciate all the love uh for for these songs uh, i've heard from a couple of people telling me how great the songs are uh, yeah, they're great, and I appreciate the love, but we haven't written any of these yet, but, but that's coming, I promise. All right, so again, this first song is called Let Everything. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise With all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your heart. Canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart.
right, so we had talked about each week we're going to kind of go over three things uh, of the song. The first is kind of the structure, the musicality of the song. Um, I, really, I really like that song. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I felt the need to say that. Um, one, one thing I will say about, you know, what we, what we do is um, uh, sometimes the case will be is, is kind of an outlet for us to do songs that, that maybe we wouldn't normally do um, in, in service, um, but maybe we're going to do uh, in the future. And I think, uh, I think you're already doing this in the drive through is that correct? Or the youth, both and? Um, but yeah, I, I think I think this would be a good one for the auditorium as well. But I like the song, and have to admit, I hadn't really played it before today. But um, but Aaron's a a good teacher, so yeah. I mean, tell us uh, all about this song. So I mean, as far as the musical aspect, um, it's a pretty it's a pretty upbeat song. It's a pretty fun song to play. Be a good opener. Yeah, it'd definitely be a good opener for a service. Um, you know, it starts off pretty soft, and you think it's going to be kind of a slow, emotional song, and then it really picks up. And uh, I kind of, that's one reason I wanted to play it today. It's really just, you know, an upbeat, just happy song. And um, as far as our, our next one was, Where's the Truth in this song, is especially biblically. And of course, the, uh, the main line is, Let everything that has, that has breath praise the Lord, which comes straight out of the Bible. Um, I pulled it up at Psalms 150, and the whole the whole Psalms 150 is all about let all things praise the Lord. Um, but the very last verse is let everything that has breath uh, praise the Lord. And so um, <laughs> there's a motorcycle driving by. See ya. Uh, and it, the the truth to the song goes right along with our third category. It's just why can we worship to this? And that, you know, it comes straight out of the Bible. And that's why, you know, last week we kind of talked about with um, So Will I is a lot of worship music is very self-centered, all about, you know, I'm going to praise God because he's done this for me. I'm going to praise God because he did this. Or, you know, it's all about what God has done for me. But uh, one thing I like about this song is it... Um, it doesn't. It doesn't talk about that. It doesn't talk about what God's done for me. It's just let's praise the Lord, just because He's the Lord, you know. And uh, what, the first time I heard this was when we went to that uh, revival that Sean Fuchs is doing across the country. We went to the one. The youth group went to the one in Atlanta. And one thing he said is that you know, in the middle of COVID, they're trying to shut down churches and they're trying to stop praise and worship. And uh, he he was saying before they played the song, he said, we weren't going to do this. And it comes down to one simple thing, and that's because he's worthy. So, you know, when they told him they couldn't they couldn't sing in church, he said, well, I'm going to do it because he's worthy. When they said they couldn't travel around the country and play music and worship together, he said, well, you know, I'm going to do it, and it's because he's worthy. So this song is really, um, it's not about praising because, God has done something specifically for you. It's about praising just because he's worthy to be praised because everything everything that has breath gives its praise to God. Another thing I like about the song is, um, and I think I said this last week, is, uh, you know, a, a lot of songwriters will take really, you know, big chunks of, of song lyrics, which are actually big chunks of scripture that have been made into other songs decades ago. I mean, how many songs have said, let everything that has breath praise Lord. That's one of the greatest, yeah. you know, psalms that 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 there that we have. And just, you know, not that there's anything wrong with the song from, I don't know, when, you know, another song from like maybe the 70s, 80s, or 90s. There's nothing wrong with that song, but this is that song for this generation yeah um and i and you know i i love that uh tell me how to pronounce the guy's name again sean Fuch. i think that's I right it? someone someone well, has told me it's pronounced differently but yeah and 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 he is um really a voice of, of a generation um really kind of a, a such a time as this um ministry that he's doing and uh yeah it's a great song uh um that, that kind of harkens back to a timeless theme. Yeah, and it was actually uh, it was actually really hard for me to find this song because since he's not the original writer, the song's not under his name on any platforms. So I remember him singing it at the at the event, and I just remember that line, the Bible verse, "Let everything that has breath." 
And so that's all I could do is I just had to look up, let everything that has a breath on Spotify and go through dozens of songs with the same, <laughs> the same title. Uh, but yeah, that's like he said, it's very much for this generation. That's why I like it. It's just, you know, an upbeat, just a happy song. You know, let's just praise God because, you know, he deserves it. I'm happier after hearing you <laughs> play and sing it. <laughs> And when they when they played this, it was you know they had the full band and they had guitars and everyone and they actually um, and all the instrumental breaks uh, in between the lyrics they had everyone dancing and jumping up and down and it was great. It was really a celebration song. Um, right, so the next song that that we're going to talk about before we play is "Sea of Victory." Um, our congregation should be very familiar with this song. We've done it many times in the drive-through, in, in youth service, um, and in the auditorium. It's just a great song. And it comes out of Elevation Church. Um, and the, the writers of the song, Stephen Furtick, and he's actually the lead pastor, uh, as you know, of Elevation Church, uh, which is something I'll touch on here in a minute. Uh, and ben Fielding is actually out of Hillsong. So I think it's really cool that uh, a songwriter from Hillsong and and the Elevation guys collaborated on a song, uh, Jason Ingram and Chris Brown, their worship leader. Um, and so once again, just on these songs, we're going to talk about, you know, the truth of the song, a little bit of the structure of the song, and uh, how can we worship to the song. And, you know, right out the gate, the very first uh, words of the song, very first verse, uh, is something that should be very familiar to the believer. Um, the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Um, and that is out of uh, Isaiah fifty four seventeen, 17, um, which pretty much says that word for word, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Such a great promise that we have um, in God's word. And if, if I could also add, um, I really like the way they phrased that right there, yeah. because, um, you know, when we read that verse, no weapon formed mm -hmm. against you will prosper, I often say that we seem to have the misconception at times that, you know, when we get saved and that means everything's going to be okay and life is great and the thing is that that's just not biblical and so some may read that verse and say oh well god's on my side no weapons will form against me but that's the thing is yeah they will weapons the enemy will form weapons the enemy will attack you and even the next line says when the darkness falls it won't prevail so it doesn't say the darkness won't fall it doesn't say there won't be weapons it says there will but that's the the beauty of this song and the beauty of that verse is that you know, it doesn't say the enemy's not going to attack you. The Bible says you will face sufferings, you will go through trials, but the thing is that, and the song says over and over, I'm going to see a victory. So, you know, it, the idea that if we get saved, that everything's going to be okay is not true. But Absolutely. it's that when we go through tough times, that we, we have strength in Jesus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and literally, you know, words out of my mouth, I was going to say that very thing, um, you know, yeah. When, when, the dark net, not if, when, definitely. And I was doing a little bit of um, just reading up on this song, just trying to, you know, figure out what, you know, the writers actually said about it. And they said, you know, it's a little unfair when your lead pastor helps you write songs because they're automatically going to have a little bit more to them. Um, it's like every line of, especially the verses, uh, every line it, you can kind of hear him preach you know the weapon may be formed but it won't prosper when the darkness falls it won't prevail the god i serve knows only how to triumph my god will never fail i mean that just sounds i'm not surprised that, that a preacher uh wrote those words um and that's to me the the verses um in the chorus you know we're getting into a little bit of the form of the song the verses in the chorus is um you know kind of complement each other the chorus is, is very uh, repetitive says the same thing over and over but um and the chorus is great but for me kind of the meat and the power of the song is is there in those verses yeah. those verses are are the promise and the reason that you can sing the chorus the chorus is a statement of faith the chorus is something, I'm going to see a victory. The victory's not here yet, 
but I'm going to see it because Isaiah says the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. There's going to be, you know, in this life, you have trials. I don't know where that is in the Bible off, off, off the top of my head, but it, you know, that's a very familiar verse as well. In this world, you have uh, trouble, but be of, uh, take heart. I have overcome the world. And because of that, and because of those promises, I'm going to see a victory. And, you know, one thing, I feel like you're about to burst over here. You want to jump in? No, I, I was just going to say, you know, it, it's, I think that I've never thought of it that way, that the, the, the lyrics and the verses are the reason we can see the chorus. Absolutely. And I especially like the way the second verse ends, or I know how the story ends. And, yeah. you know, when we go through things, we often think, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, you know what. And some one one time pastor joey said a quote that really stuck with me he said sometimes i guess miracles wait until heaven and so even if we don't see victory here in life you know our story ends in heaven and so no matter what no matter how tragic life may look we're going to see a victory in heaven one day yeah if you're if you're a believer that that is your hope i i can't fathom you know people that don't have faith that don't have God in their lives, they um, they don't have hope. They may put hope in something, but it's it's not real hope. It's 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 fake hope. And um, we have true hope. We we have the hope of eternity, and that's exactly what what Aaron's talking about. And once again, you know, in verse two, here's the preacher again. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. Um, I know how the story is. So yeah, I, they, they, you know, they were kind of chuckling, talking about, you know, how unfair it is that 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 the pastor uh, writes, you know, these these songs and and has that power in there. Now, a little bit more about the form of the song. You know, the chorus. Um, when when you first, you know. Uh, sing it and hear it or whatever, you find that it, it's it's repetitive, all right? And I think sometimes that might can be, you know, some people may think that's a, uh, a negative thing. Oh, it's too repetitive. It just it's go, it goes on and on. Well, if you're going through it, it's not repetitive. If you're going through it, you want to say that over and over again until that victory comes. If you're going through it, if there's something you're facing in, that you're facing in your life that you need victory over, whether it be uh, you know a bad doctor's report, you know a, a text that you see that you'd never thought you know would would come to you, or um, just anything. If there's a battle that you're facing, I bet it's not repetitive in that situation. I bet in that situation you're saying you're you're on your knees and you're saying I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. God, the battle belongs to you. I'm going to see a victory. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's been many words of, of wisdom in, in the existence of the grizzles. And, and we like to call those uh, grizzleisms. And one of the greatest grizzleisms, uh, one of my favorite, comes from uh, my father in law, Mike Grizzle. And he says, uh, You got to pray until you do pray. You got to sing until you do sing. And I think that that's what that means. You have to just stand your ground and claim, you know, I'm going to see a victory. You claim these promises that are laid out for us in these verses and, and you know, in your Bible, and you stand upon the Word of God and you claim and, and you just keep proclaiming it until you, you pray until you do pray, if that makes sense by now. Um, so I love, uh, I love how he says that. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, praise sometimes is a sacrifice. You know, you've got to sing until you do sing. You've got to, you know, praise to me kind of starts the engine, you know, that allows us to worship, you know. Um, so. Um, and I, I was actually going to say that exact same thing uh, yeah. yesterday. Uh, I was talking to Pastor Bob Trejo, our children's pastor, and he said, you know, worship, you know, praise and worship, it takes emotional energy. Mm -hmm. And there's some days where we're going through something or we're having a problem and we're just out of emotional energy. And, you know, but that's the thing. That's why it's called, sometimes it's called a sacrifice of praise. You know, we, when you don't have the energy, when you're not feeling it, you just got to do it anyways. And it's sing until you do sing you know if you're not feeling the song you just keep singing it and if you realize those there's truth in those lyrics then you keep going and then it'll, you know 
It'll hit you. And that's right out of the Bible as well. You know, bring the sacrifice of praise. I did want to touch on the uh, bridge a little bit as well. Um, once again, um, you know, the, the truth and, and where we can find that bridge um, in, in Scripture should be, again, very familiar. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Um, that's right out of the first book of the Bible, last chapter of that book, Genesis uh, 50, verse 20. Um, says that pretty much word for word. Um, and once again, this is, this is a bridge that just repeats. And that's okay because... You know, if you're going through something, you're gonna, you know, um, you're gonna re- want to repeat those um, those promises. You know, you take what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for good. You know, I'm a child of God, Lord. I know you're gonna work this out for me. I know that, you know, the devil intended this to do me in, but you have my best interest at heart, God. You, you, um, we have that hope. You know, God, you, you. Um, we have the hope of eternity, if that's how it's going to happen, or we have hope here on earth. Um, and that's why, you know, God is such a, you know, to quote another song, such a good, good father. He, he cares for us. He cares for us.
I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the bad. God, right now, like if you could just keep uh, praying softly. Lord, I pray for anyone that, that may be watching right now that God, they're praying for a victory. They're facing a battle in their life, God, and they, they're looking to you for answers, God. I pray that you would honor that prayer. You would honor that request, God, and you would fight that battle for them. Right there in front of that computer screen, that phone screen, however they're watching, God. Lord, you see the need. You know everything about us, God. Every, every minor detail, Lord. You know all about it, God. And you know best how to take care of what's yours, God. And we belong to you, God. We're, we're your children. We're the sheep of your pastor. And God, we know that you're going to take care of us, God. We claim these promises. And we, we're going to see a victory. And, and we, we praise you ahead of time. We praise you in the middle of it, God. In the eye of the storm, God, we praise you even now. And God, as we um, end our time together, Lord, I just pray for everyone out there that's, that's watching. Let them be encouraged by our words and, and our songs. Um, in Jesus' name.